This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and here it is a remake of a popular SmackDown that's here by popular request. A lot of you asked for it. This is the 2015 15 inch Retina MacBook Pro versus the 13 inch 2015 Retina MacBook Pro. Big price gap between these, not too much of a weight gap, a pound between them. Obviously, different sizes here, different capabilities. We're going to help you figure out which one's for you now. So here it is, the tale of two Macs, one of those smackdowns where either way the manufacturer, in this case Apple, is going to win because they're both the same brand. Obviously we see the Apple logo on here. So you Mac haters, you Apple haters, this is not the video for you. Go ahead and watch our Asus reviews, our HP reviews, or one of those. And you Mac people who are trying to decide between these two, this is for you. I know it's not an easy choice because the 15 inch brings a lot to the table and well, that price tag, is it really worth it? And then there's the weight and size. Obviously a difference in size right here, not so much in terms of from here to here, but the length is considerably noticeably different. Thickness, as you can see, is just about the same on these. Now the weight difference isn't that big, it's one pound. Three and a half pounds, four and a half pounds. Granted, the charger, both of these use Apple's square plastic charger. It's a bit bigger. It's an 85 watt charger here, but not hugely insanely bigger. So I don't know. Is that really going to make much of a difference to you guys? And if we stack them on top, you can see the difference in size like so. So first off, how much can you tolerate carrying around? Even though there's not that much of a weight difference here, obviously there is a significant size difference. I can tell you that I've had both of these and lugged them around and the 15 inch light as it is for a, a powerful real workhorse, taking this to trade shows overseas and having it on my back day in, day out, boy, I really, I got tired of it. I'll tell you that. 13 inch is an easier load for those of you who are carrying these around an awful lot. If you're using this mostly at your desk at work or at home, then that becomes less relevant and you know who you are when it comes to that. When it comes to ports, Apple has replicated the ports on both of these the same way. So you're looking at the same pretty decent selection of ports right here. Your SD card slot, your full size HDMI, USB 3.0 port on this side. And as we spin around our nine pounds of machines here, again on the same MagSafe connector, two Thunderbolt 2 ports that function also as mini display ports, another USB 3.0 port, and our headphone jack. So you're not gaining any ports by going for the bigger model. What you are getting, obviously, is a larger display. We got our 13.3 inch display on the small guy, a 15.4 inch display on the larger model. Display resolution on both of these is retina class, as Apple likes to call it. That just means it's a pretty high pixel density, and it's IPS, and pretty bright. Both of these are around 300 to 340 nits. Smaller one's actually a little bit brighter than the bigger one, obviously. is an issue of power conservation there, and also probably just some variance between display panels. Anyway, the smaller one, 2560 by 1440 resolution. The bigger one is 2880 by 1600. Uh, so... You know, there's a two inch difference in size. There's a little bit difference in the absolute resolution there. Design on the inside, gosh, they look identical, don't they? Somebody just took the 13 inch and stretched out and made the 15 inch or vice versa here. So you're, you're getting the same exact industrial design, the same look and feel, the same quality materials, the same, it's new, force touch trackpad. Clicks on all four corners, very nice and pleasant, and you press and hold down and you get the force touch kind of click, so it can be useful in some applications. You get a quick preview of a web page link, that sort of thing. Both of these have fast PCIe storage inside. Both of them are so fast, okay, faster than anybody's business fast. Really, if you do a lot of data transfers, you're going to like either one of these. I'm not going to quibble quabble about which one of these is faster SSD storage because they're both faster than most things available currently on the market. Our 13 inch model starts with 8 gigs of RAM. You can get it with 16 gigs of RAM. Now the 15 inch is just 16 gigs of RAM. So you're going to start out with max RAM there. For both of these, RAM is soldered on board. They are very difficult to service if you open them up. Pretty much only SSD is easily accessible inside. So no wins there. The big difference, first off, the screen size. If you have older, more tired eyes, you're probably going to like the 15 inch better if you don't mind carrying the extra weight. If you do a lot of photo editing or video production, I still find it kind of hard to do on a 13 inch display. That's why I use my 13 inch connected to a Thunderbolt display when I'm at work. A 15 inch roomier, you'll notice the difference definitely easier. So for those of you who do a lot of that sort of work, it's going to make a difference there. If you're just doing word processing, browsing the web, all that sort of thing, 
it's nice to have a bigger screen, but not so much. And then you might say, well, the difference in price and the difference in weight is more important to me. When it comes to horsepower, this is the other important point. Now, the 13-inch Retina Mac may be fast compared to most Windows Ultrabooks because it uses a higher wattage, 28-watt CPU, which is nice. For graphics, performance difference, Intel Iris 6100 graphics, which is more powerful than the usual HD graphics that you see in an Ultrabook, and that's, that's what you get with the more powerful CPU package here. But here we have Intel Iris Pro graphics, however, a slightly older version because this is still running on Haswell. This one has been updated to Broadwell because there are no quad-core Broadwells available yet. So you do get more powerful integrated graphics here, even given the generational change. But one more thing, you can get this with dedicated graphics. Now the base model is $2,000 for our 15-inch Retina MacBook Pro. For $2,500, you can get the AMD Radeon R9 M370X dedicated graphics, and that makes a huge difference in performance. So this, again, is where this is the machine for pros who are pros, and they know it because it's what they're doing every day for a living. You video editors, you people who are doing professional graphics work, uh, the GPU isn't going to help you so much with coding and all that sort of thing. I, if you're doing some rendering, 3D rendering, that sort of thing, it's going to really help. If you're doing even fairly demanding tasks like compiling large programs with the 13-inch Retina MacBook Pro, it's going to do a fine job. I actually use it day in, day out for Photoshop with very large RAW files, even with the NIC Photo Collection. Now, I do notice the difference. With the NIC Collection on the Mac, it's going to take a minute for it to run some of the advanced filters, where it's going to happen in about 20, 25 seconds on the 15-inch Retina MacBook Pro. Still, it's pretty tolerable. Even if it takes a minute, it's not like you run complex filters constantly. But if you do, and some of you may, you're going to want the 15-inch instead. In terms of CPU performance, dual core here, that's all you got. You can get Core i5, you know, you get Core i7. They're going to be two cores. Here, it's only quad cores. And this is a 47-watt CPU package. Now, part of that is because with the, the CPU wattage there includes the integrated graphics as well. So they have to allow for Intel Iris Pro. For here, they have to allow for Intel 6100 graphics. Anyway, higher wattage on the CPU is higher, perform higher performance, rather, more cores. Twice the cores is twice the speed. No surprise there. So for the Geekbench 3 scores, which measures primarily the CPU, the 15-inch MacBook Pro. Now, we have the higher-end model with a 2.8 gigahertz rather than the 2.5 gigahertz, so it's going to do a little bit better. 3953 for the single core. Now the 13 inch scored 3325. So there's a, a divide there, and I would expect it to manage, say, 3800 versus 3325 if you got the 2.5 gigahertz. And on the multi core test, this is where you're going to notice the big difference because, again, four cores versus two. 15,143 for the 15 inch Retina MacBook Pro versus 7,042 on the 13 inch. So you can see twice the computational power there for multi-core, multi-thread aware programs, which these days is certainly just about every professional program on the planet. For graphics scores, comparing the dedicated graphics model of the 15-inch Retina MacBook Pro versus our 13-inch friend right here, with of course integrated graphics because that is the only way you can get it. On the TestMark 8X test, OpenGL, and that's set at best for Retina display resolution on both of these. The 13-inch Mac scored 183 frames per second. The 15-inch Mac with AMD graphics scored 406, so we're talking twice as fast again. And like I said, it really does depend how much of a need for speed you have. It's easy to probably overproject and think you need more speed than you do. This guy serves me just fine, a lot of power there, but if I was the video editor, we do have a video editor who has to do most of the editing. It's not me, folks. There's a person that does a wonderful job here for our videos. I would have the 15-inch. Yes, I would. If I had to do this for hours every day. But for doing occasional short video edits, full HD from trade shows, that sort of thing, filling in for our video editor when our lucky video editor gets to go on vacation, this is perfectly adequate. If I was running a lots of advanced Photoshop filters with a 24 to 50 megapixel raw file, well, then I would probably want to go for the 15-inch. But if I was doing Word, Excel, coding, just getting started in college, the 13-inch would do the job just fine and for significantly less money. The configuration I have right here is the $1,500 model that gets you a 256 gig SSD and 8 gigs of RAM. 
The base model for $2,000 gets you a 256 gig SSD also. You don't have to bump up to get to that. But you do get the 16 gigs of RAM, so you're getting more RAM. Now, you really have to be a pro to manage to use up 16 gigs of RAM or running lots of virtual machines. For those of you who run Parallels, for example, there is a way you can eat up some more memory. So eight's pretty good. 16, wow, super future-proof. If you go up to the $2,500 model with this, you get a 512 gig SSD. At that point, you're upgrading our 13-inch, going up to about $1,799 or so, just to get the 512 gig SSD. You're getting close enough in price to the integrated graphics version of this. You might as well just get this if you want it, the bigger one. Now, with all that power in the 15-inch, something has to give, right? It's going to be battery life. Well, the 15-inch among 15-inch workstation-class laptops has some of the best battery life you're going to find right now, but still, it's shorter than our smaller friend right here. 74.9 watt hour battery versus 99.5 watt hour battery. So you get a bigger battery here, obviously, to help make up for the difference in power consumption. Apple claims nine hours of wireless web or iTunes movie playback for the 15 inch, and they claim 10 hours of wireless web or 12 hours of iTunes playback on the 13 inch. I can tell you from benchmarks for battery life and from personal experience that this smaller model right here in average productivity use, which I admit might include streaming, well, gee, some YouTube videos or an our episode of Netflix in the mix with the productivity task, which includes some Photoshop editing and all that sort of stuff. This guy usually does me about 11 hours, which is very good. It's impressive. Now, Apple claims nine hours for the 15 inch. And if you stay away from the graphically intensive tasks that are going to turn on the dedicated GPU, or if you actually disable it, you could get there at about 40% brightness. But typically, I find that really it's been lasting me about eight hours on a charge, doing the same things as the smaller one. So there's a significant difference there of three hours on average battery life. Both of these models have dual band Wi-Fi 802.11ac. They have Bluetooth 4.0. They have backlit keyboards. They have a 720p FaceTime camera, stereo speakers. The stereo speakers on the Big Mac, no surprise, they do sound better, and they're firing up right here on the grills. Uh, the 13-inch, as 13-inch laptops go, sounds pretty good, pretty loud, pretty full, but even louder, even fuller on the bigger model. They just have more space to do it and a useful place on the top deck to fire the sound right out at you. In terms of heat and noise, this is one last important point to make. With less horsepower comes less heat and noise. The 13-inch Retina MacBook Pro very rarely gets hot. I hardly ever hear the fan. In part, that is because Apple tunes these to hardly ever turn on the fan unless it's really necessary. They believe in quiet running machines. Personally, I believe in fans that come on and extend the life of my laptop. That's another story. There are fan control applications for those of you who are micromanaging like I am for your fan. Anyway, this guy, cool, quiet, if I'm doing something like playing Civ 5 on this, you know, it'll get hot then on the bottom. It's metal, it's conductive, all that sort of thing. But for everything else that I do, not so much. For the 15-inch, it will be hotter. It will be noisier. It has dedicated graphics in here. It has more powerful integrated graphics. It has more CPU cores. So more heat and noise from the 15-inch. And for workstation class laptops, they do just tend to be hotter and noisier. That's the way that they roll because of what you're getting inside on each of these. So there it is, Mac versus Mac Smack. And now you know maybe which one is the best suited for you. For those of you who truly need the power or just really want a larger display, which is understandable, 15 inches is kind of nice, a little luxurious there. It's the 15-inch MacBook Pro for you. For, for those of you who are on a tight budget and do moderate to light computing, even higher, higher than moderate, like me, I manage just fine with this 13-inch MacBook Pro with Retina display too. And it is about, you know, almost half the price too. So that's a consideration for a lot of you. Both of these have really gorgeous displays, excellent keyboards, pretty good speakers for a laptop, that incredible aluminum unibody build Lovely to look at. Not bad. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to watch each of our video reviews of these products. Read our written reviews on mobiletechreview.com where we have a whole lot of benchmark tables for you to look at too for both of these. And subscribe to our YouTube channel.